French colleagues and listeners, here we are, podcast session. And this is a, a little bit of an unusual one because um, the circumstance in which it happened and the invite um, was, wasn't was planned. But at the end of the day, I'm so pleased that it has been planned. And um, I'll get to the storyline in a minute. But first of all, I'd like to introduce our guest for today. And that's Aberdeen Doula. And Aberdeen is an account manager for airlines and lessers and uh, represents you of the manufacturing company VRR. So Aberdeen, great to have you on board, my friend. Yes, thank you so much for inviting me. Great to be here. Mm. No, it's good. Now, what I'll just do before we, we get into um, what you do and, um, and um, a, few other, a few other subject matter topics, I'm just going to explain to the listeners how it came to be that you're on here, okay? So back in September last year, we had a wonderful conference in Athens, and I was moderating one of the panels, and it was all to do with retention and everything to do with people. And we were going around, the panel was doing well, and then we asked a few questions. And then all of a sudden, three quarters of the way back down the crowd, I seen this hand come up, and then there was a mic put in front of him. And then he asked a very, very direct question, which was basically, subject matter I agree with. There's a lot of C-level and senior managers here. Why don't we have younger representation? So I'm on the front. So obviously he was looking at me a little bit ancient and he's probably thinking, what's that old geezer doing up there? I could do better. But we had a little conversation and I asked him, would he like to moderate a session at the next year's podcast, which he said, yes, he would. And that's what we're doing. And um, I think that shows that there's an openness um, at, at Aberdeen, you know, and it's a, a welcome openness. And I'm genuinely looking forward because when we had a chat afterwards, you know, some of the things you said hit home. And I think fair play to you for having the courage to put your hand up, ask that question and have the conviction then to take up the offer, which I gave very directly. And here we are. So how, let me ask you a quick question. When you asked that question, what sort of response did you think you were going to get? I think I was expecting to kind of like make more of a general comment rather than expecting an answer. And even like throughout the whole session, uh, I was sitting next to my manager and I was saying like, oh, this doesn't feel right. You know, this is, this is not, I don't agree with this. And then he said like, speak up. And he said it two, two times, I think. And then the second time I just did the panel ended and I asked, uh, well, I, I didn't ask the question. I made the comments and then uh, obviously you invited me. So that, that's kind of, that's how it came on and about um, a little push, I guess, but also it was something which didn't really stick with me. What was said at the moment as well. Yeah, but were you were you surprised to be given that that invite straight away? Definitely, definitely. I was definitely surprised. I um, I guess I just wanted to give some food of thought for them to to kind of like like lay out like it's great that we have all these strategies and it's great that we generalize people over a whole generation and make assumptions based on that. But at the end of the day, it's not a whole generation and it's not uh, one group of people that you have to treat. It's different people and without talking to those people, mostly ground people, I guess, you yeah. won't get you go you won't get the results. That's what what I thought. Yeah, yeah. No, and I I I like I said, as soon as you as soon as you asked the question, rather than, you know, try and waffle or whatever, I just thought it was the right thing to do to say, totally agree with you. Would you like to attend and be part of the session next year? And I for one, I'm really pleased, honestly. And um I'm so looking forward to to being there again and listening to a similar subject matter but with you as a moderator. So yeah. thank you so again. much for the opportunity as well, of course. Yeah. Pardon? Also, well, thank you to you for the opportunity. Uh, that's also something. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But that, I, I, you know what I mean, Aberdeen, I think that's what life's all about. You know, you pass the baton or you, you know, it's like playing sport. If you play sport with a ball, you don't do very well. If you keep the ball to yourself all the time, someone's eventually going to tackle you. So you might as well pass it to somebody young who's got the speed to get up there and cross the ball. So no, but genuinely, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. Um, now, before we get into some some details about that particular subject matter, can you just explain what are your responsibilities currently in your current role? Yes. So basically, I'm the account manager, as you said, for the airlines for the for the lessor market. Um, and what that means is, uh, on the one hand, I I manage the accounts that are currently uh, within our organization that we have. Yeah. which are uh, you know which have a global span across all uh, all regions and on the other hand we also uh, you know do the hard sales and that's uh, chase new leads ch chase new startup airlines uh, and try to to identify uh, new markets and and enter those 
Yeah, good. Now, how, how long have you been with them? Uh, so actually, right now, it's a little over a year. Um, I joined in January uh, last year. Uh, so yeah, it's yeah. a little over a year now. And how, how do you feel with regard to the like the training and the development and the support that you've been given? Obviously, I met, I met your manager as well. Mm -hmm. So to say to you, you know, go and ask a question. But even for you to be at that conference is a positive thing. Definitely. So we get a lot of opportunities. Um, I'm very lucky to be with the company. I, I think they, they, they don't hold a hand over your head. As they say, they, they give you the freedom. They trust you. And that's what they said in the beginning. I actually come from an airline background where there's a lot of, um, you know, corporate structure. And yeah. back then for me, it was like, uh, you know, there was a bounce and you cannot just overstep them. So the first week when I joined, I was kind of like waiting for instructions and waiting for like, Oh, how should I go yeah. on and about? And then, my manager came over and he was like, you know, what are you waiting for? Just plan your stuff. Go ahead. It's like you have all the freedom. We hired you for this position and we fully trust you with that. And and that trust, um, yeah, that that's just, yeah, for me, it's I highly appreciate it uh, because it shows that they, they really believe in you. Yeah. Now, now, as somebody starting off in their career, and I, I, sorry, if you don't mind me being so rude as to ask how old you are. I'm 27. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So you've got, you know, you've got, you've got some wonderful years ahead of you. Um, somebody who's got expectations and what you want, etc. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I would have thought money isn't the biggest driver for you at this moment in time. Uh, no, for me, not. Um, even though I must say, uh, it plays a big it. role, right? No, so like on the one hand, it plays a role because, like, um, I think we're slightly getting ahead of the maybe of the discussion, but uh, if you look at the retention. So when you're, when you're, let's say, higher educated, you are paid a bit more than somebody who does the groundwork. Um, yeah. So for me, let's say, I don't have to worry about my, my rent, about my food, about uh, having fun. All that stuff is kind of like a given to me, um, which makes us, in my opinion, a bit more like entitled, I guess. Yeah. And then you start looking after, after different, different things. And that's like, okay, job security. Can I progress? Can I, yeah. can I become better at what I do? How can I improve myself? Um, so it plays a role, but I don't, I don't think it, you know, there's a limit. Like once you have everything set, then you start looking for other stuff, I believe. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree with you. I think things like recognition, things like being given opportunity development, you know, whether or not managers genuinely care about the people who are going to take the business to the next level or the next phase. Um, you know, I think I think those things people are starting to think a lot more about now. And uh, for me, if it was my company, uh, you know, I'd always encourage I'd always encourage people to question any company they would think of going for an interview with to say, you know, how many hours a year do I get as training? What sort of development do I get? You know, all those things so that the individual is actually putting the companies under pressure for the expectations that they've got in order for them to anchor themselves to that company for X amount of years, because at the end of yeah. the day, that is, you know? Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. You'd agree with that. Right. Now, one of the things I want to ask you now, right at the beginning. So what has been one of the biggest frustrations that you've had since you came into this industry? The industry, I think um, it's easy how we let people go. It's very easy how, how, once we have hardships is how we, we straight away go look at our overhead and see how we can cut it off. I think that's one of the main challenges that this industry has always faced and which creates also a, a lot of frustration, right? Because most people who are in this industry, they're here because they love it. And, and just imagine you do what you love. So you're not there for the money. You're not there for, for the financial benefit. You're there to just for your own experience because you, you really love to be there. And then uh, your company cuts you off because you're, you're seen as overhead. I think that's a big frustration and that also creates some resentment. And that's also perhaps the key driver why we cannot keep people uh, in our industry sometimes. Because why would I go work, work on a platform, um, be exposed to fumes, noise, heavy weights, when I can work for the same minimum wage at Starbucks and even get a tip and be in inside? Yeah, um, yeah. That's what I would say is, is, is one of the key challenges right now. Yeah. It is, it is weird, isn't it? And it's, and it's and when, when you look at some of the elements of the business, because it, it is a fantastic industry, because when you look at any aircraft that's on the ground, you've got so many different business spheres that go around it, whether it's catering, finance, HR, training, 
operations, you know, weight, weight and balance, you know, fueling. You've got everything involved. And wherever an aircraft lands somewhere else, you've got the same things going on there. So, in essence, if you improve your skill set, you've got the opportunity to move somewhere else. Yeah. I mean, for myself, I um, while I was doing my bachelor's degree in aeronautical engineering, I even worked uh, as a baggage handler myself as a student job at Eindhoven Airport. I thought it would be, on the one hand, of course, a big aviation nerd, as I would say, because I wanted to see the planes take off. But on the other hand, I also felt like I really need to be close to the operation. I need to see what do people do, because it's great that I might know how, how an airline is run or great to know how an aircraft is designed. But like, what does it mean for the people on the ground to be there? And, and, yeah. and yeah, what are the implications? Yeah, no, that's that's a very valid point. And I'm old school. I I, I grew up in the industry, and I've done most of the most of the roles. And I, I got I got to admit, the favourite job I ever had was was weight and balance because you see everything, you plan everything, and then when you see that aircraft take off that you've actually trimmed, you get a certain buzz from it, you know. But equally, I've done baggage. I've done many, many, many different areas, and as you improve your career and you go up, it's always good that people know you've done the things that they're doing as well. You get a little bit more respect, I feel, anyhow. And if you yeah. can relate to the hardships and the difficulties, you've got a much, much better overview of what you're trying to get them to achieve as a collective team. So, you know, I think that's really, really important. So well done. Well done yourself. Now, right, people have got different perceptions of what's right, what's wrong. And I'm, I'm not going to get involved in any of the sensitive issues. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure some of them will come up in September. But no, you look at, you know, you look at things, human fatigue, anxieties. You've got, you've got all these things that the press, in my opinion, are negatively promoting. And then you get things going from one extreme to the other. And um, you know, I think, I think the younger generation now has got a wonderful opportunity to really change the things that haven't been able to be changed previously, a lot to do with, you know, obviously less paperwork, digitization, automation, you know, a lot of innovation. Um, they've got a great opportunity to, to do things very, very, very differently now. Now, do you feel the platform is there to allow them that opportunity? I believe it is there. Um, why? I mean, so, Previously, everything was done manually, right? So like, like let's say in the old age, everything uh, was taken care of by working with your hands, um, you know, sticking your heads together and working all together. And now, as you said, digital is, digitalization is a key point of improving that because the manual stuff is being taken out. But what becomes more challenging is like, how do you manage that transition? Um, yeah. and, and so I would say that would be kind of like where we are good at because like we have grown up with the, uh, with the digital age, like at least my generation, partly they were they grew they were, they grew up throughout the the upcoming of the digital age, and that gives us a very good um, idea and foundation to actually drive these these new technologies and actually remove the manual work and uh, replace it by digitalization, and and drive the industry and improve it as a whole. Yeah, no, hundred percent, and I. And I also think, and, and, and I'll be interested to hear your feedback, is that if individuals realise that they more, the more they do and the better they are at multitasking, cross-skilling, you know, so they're improving their own asset value, what you said earlier about, you know, downsizing or being released, there's less chance of that happening. And if they embrace the digitization and, and really see it as, again, increasing their own personal value, the balance there of you know being you know doing more with less, being more agile instead of flexible, that the greater then you know opportunity for them moving forward and more stability, which then comes back to people accepting that you can have a very good career in aviation. Yeah, of course, and but that's also I think more like it depends on the people. Um, I, I think it's more your character traits, right? So people like it like to have it comfortable. You like to do the same thing, and that's fine, right? Like not everybody needs to grow and to progress. Uh, there's also yeah. people who are fine with like doing what they're doing, but yeah, it does hamper your abilities to, 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 to take other skills on and transfer those to a different job. So then if those cuts happen, then yeah, you, you're probably the first to go because your skill set is not as broad as, as the other ones who do put in the work and who, are, who do the effort um, to expand their skill set. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. Now training, 
Okay, so you've got you've got certain regulatory training in our industry, which you know is good, but then you've got you've got you know an absolute cascading waterfall of training everywhere, whereby the message is you need to train more to be to be more more um, stable in your career, etc. But it it, 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 I, it personally, again, I'm not putting words in your mouth, but personally, mm -hmm. I think there's been too much training, which is at the end of the day a memory test for how long you've done the training, but it doesn't mean that you're going to be better or have a high impact in the actual workforce. And I think what people now need is they need to see a, a, immediacy. They need to see that something makes a difference to what you were doing that's better than what you did yesterday. And if people can see that and it's making an impact, then they'll believe in it more and they'll, they'll want more of that. So the way to do that isn't necessarily now, you know, with traditional training or online or via you know, teams or whatever, but by having by having credible care coaches within an organization who actually engage and are so passionate in that part of the job that they do, that anybody who comes in who needs to learn that, they're the best people to teach them. Yes. Yeah. So I, I also used to work for Qatar Airways, actually, the cargo division. And um, I enrolled myself in the so-called Q Talent Program, as they called it. And that program aimed to rotate um fresh off, fresh off university young people around all three departments it was revenue management operations and sales and network planning and with that you also got a mentor right so there was uh, senior executives who have a lot of experience and really are like they weren't just like picked out they were actually asked like who wants to do this so that yeah. comes a bit like with that mentorship i think because you can lay out your challenges that you're facing and see how they would tackle it and then you can still have your own views on it but at least you you get some somebody to spar with it, and then uh, obviously once you rotate around different departments, you get different skill sets, and that broadens your 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 abilities as well. Um, but having somebody who who guides you um, and supports you, or at least gives you gives you a sparring opportunity, um, is a learning moment. Uh, it, yeah, you learn quick, you learn it quicker than than going through a formal training or an e-learning or whatever it is. Exactly. Yeah. And do you believe? Do you believe, or do you recognise that there's some value in retention of knowledge testing on a regular basis? So a little bit like preventive maintenance on equipment. At the end of the day, that's what we are when we're working. We're 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 human equipment, um, yeah. but people need to know whether or not our competency levels are maintained or improving or dwindling. And do you think it's a positive thing to have a regular? like service or to let you know that yes you're still hitting the marks at the right score and do you think that's a good thing i think uh first of all it's a very good thing uh it just how do we execute it do you want to do it by a test a yearly test and make people answer questions with they would just click 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 through on, on your screen or do you want to make it a development program where you set out for example your goals for the year with your manager i want to achieve this um how are we going to do? How, how are we going to run it? How are we going to do it? What do you need from my end? Um, what does the person itself need to do to achieve those things? Um, perhaps that's the test, uh, which which makes it recurrent, right? Like the, the the way of developing yourself. And it doesn't need to be like, not everybody needs to make a move up, uh, let's say in position, but at least you need to aim for something yourself right you want to you want to improve your skill set um and and that's that should be a good thing and perhaps even that's the test uh for people yeah the one thing that i've felt is and you, you quite rightly said if you you know if you look at an organization you want you know jack welsh used to have his bell curve and how he used to motivate people to get to a certain level but you want the majority of people to be happy in their job and content in their job because they realize that that job allows them to do the things that they want to do in their life. And if they're happy doing that, that is more than what you could ever expect. But they also want to know that if at some point in the future, they wanted to turn the switch on and go into overdrive because the children had gone off to university or they, they, you know, their situation changed, that it's never too late. Um, and I think that balance is, is so, 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 so important. Um, what I also think is that, you know, if people if people realise that they've got an opportunity and they like where they are, that competency is a hybrid. It can be pick a mix. So you could have a small basic element that was, do you know the, the precise details that's involved in your job? Then yeah. 
you address targets and tactical approaches? Then how do you address certain scenarios that have occurred in the business? Would your general activity or action be similar to what the best demonstrated practice will be? So it's like a pick, a pick and mix. And like you said, you can choose what you want to do subject to the position you're in or where you'd like to be or generally what you'd like to learn. And I think if, if people have that opportunity to explore and to balance and, and, and reflect on what they're capable of, it makes people an awful lot more confident in the workplace. Yeah, it makes them enjoy the workplace as well, right? Because you're you're aiming to to do something uh, which makes it better for you. And as you said, if you enjoy the job, you'll you'll remain with the company. Uh, going back to the retention again, right? Um, so it's it's simpler. I think it's simpler than um, than it's put these days. Uh, it can it can be executed simpler than we think. Good shout, Aberdeen. Yeah, that's that's another thing that we're good at in this industry: making simple things difficult. And then it becomes difficult to make things simple. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I've always said, one of the things that we just need to achieve for our customers is do the ordinary things consistently well. And that in itself is extraordinary. Yeah, I and, totally agree. You know, that's what the industry, that's what the industry needs a lot more of. Right. Last question before we wrap up, what are going to be your one or two major aims or targets of your moderation up on the stage in sunny Athens in September. Yes, I think the first one to would be to create awareness. Um, it's great that we have these strategies, and it's great that we have these these theoretical models uh, in our heads, and we're trying to execute them. But uh, I think we need to go back to the to the basics. We need to go take a step back and then actually talk to our people. And the only way how you, how you can do this is to actually go and talk to them, not uh, generalize them or um, whatever they think is the right theoretical model behind it. Uh, so my my action would be my aim would be to kind of kind of create a call of action and and let let people talk, let let the C executives go talk to the people on the ground. Um, a great example is KLM right now, right? Like this, the new CEO went on a flight, I think, from Amsterdam to Barcelona and uh, had a catering trolley in her hand when, when she did that. Yeah. Um, that's amazing. That That's great. Like you actually go talk to the people and experience the operation yourself and there's nothing wrong with it. I actually think the people on the ground will respect you for it. So I think that would be my aim, my, my main aim, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, no, 100%. If you can, if you're prepared to mix, to mix in with your people and, and learn from them, learn from them, not just be telling people what they should be doing. I think that's the most important thing. And, and, and what I've found as well is no matter how old you are, Aberdeen, if, if you're still learning, you're still enjoying. And um, I'm looking forward to learning from you between now and September and during the session. And I'm really, really pleased you put your hand up. I'm also pleased that I suggested you should do this and you accepted. And fair play to you, my friend. And yeah, good luck you. in your career. And especially, we'll definitely... We'll definitely have a drink or two after your session in in, uh, in Athens. And I look definitely. forward to it. Thank you and so much again. Thank you to your boss for pushing you to... Uh, yes, definitely. Up and make a comment. All right. Yeah, well, thank you for the invite. And thank you also for, of course, the, the, the opportunity in Athens. And looking forward to see you there. Yeah, likewise, likewise. And uh, I really am really looking forward to it. I think you're going to do exceptionally well. So thanks very much, Aberdeen. All right, and I will joke around with you, so I'm going to nickname you Glasgow because it's a lot easier than remembering your name. So I Sounds great. Sounds great. <laughs> My friend, you take care and well done. All right, thank, thank you. you.